Welcome back to continue our discussion talking about domestic violence. Joining me again is Angela Mitchell, Educated Coordinator with Domestic Violence Intervention Services, Divis. Now let's jump in, Angela. We were talking about beginning to look more, more closely at domestic violence and the abuser, and we were talking about children in that environment. When we look into domestic violence and those types of relationships, what are some of the distinctions about them compared to a healthy relationship? I mean, a person who's abusing uh, or using violence, I mean, they may think it's normal. Right. Uh, what reasons are they using to sort of validate that we should be aware of that this is normal? Is it because I do this because I love you, or you made me do it, or if you would only do this, or you would stop doing that? I mean, what are some reasons that triggers this? Domestic violence is all about power and control. Um, everywhere you go, you hear people um, train on domestic violence. They will tell you it's all about power and control. And so abuse is really not the goal of the abuser. Control is the goal. And abuse is what they use to get that control. So I want to control you. And so first I might try nice things to control you. I might try um, whining and dining, being very romantic. Um, eventually, I might step up if I don't feel that's working, and I might just be verbally abusive to you, trying to tell you what to do, dictate mm -hmm. where you go, um, trying to control your actions. Um, later, I might escalate to physical abuse if I st don't feel the emotional abuse is working. And so then I escalate to physical, and that's where I'm hitting, punching, slapping, kicking, that sort of thing. So really, it's all about getting control over another individual. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me ask this, Angela, because some people may be thinking just like, well, hold on a minute, whining and dining can be uh, a, a symptom of, of abuse can you know it doesn't always have to be we're not saying that always is right but that could be a part of an abusive how you know most abusive relationships start off very quickly and um, we call them the sweep you off your feet syndrome so that means most of the time when these couples meet mm -hmm. um, is very very romantic in the um, beginning if you think about it abuser does not have someone on a first date and tell them I'm going to be abusive to you let's right, have a right. relationship right, right. and so they have to um, coerce that person into a relationship in some form or fashion and a lot of times whining and dining will how is how it starts me being romantic being everything you ever wanted in a partner oh, okay. um, um, buying you flowers making sure you feel safe I mean that is a way of of getting that control. Why would you go back to another person if I'm doing all these things for you? There you go, because that's how they're getting the control, because right. they're they're sucking you in, to, for exactly. lack of a better word. Exactly. Um, and, and connecting you emotionally, because women tend to be more emotionally right. focused, right. where you would not leave them. Right. And as a result, if it escalates, surely you did something, the woman did, or the person being abused, because like I say, it could be a man, right. did something wrong to change that whole outcome uh, of me being nice to you. Exactly. So you feel the guilt versus the abuser looking at their right. behavior. Right. Wow. <laughs> I, and, and, and oftentimes, let me ask you this, Angela, do we confuse, especially the person that's being abused, do we confuse that abuse, especially the whining, dining part, with love? Oh, most definitely. Um, especially in the the sweep you off your feet syndrome because they're everything we ever wanted to be so we don't realize that what they're doing is getting control over us for an example um, a person that wants to spend all their time with you and doesn't want you to spend time with friends and family mm -hmm. in the beginning that can appear very romantic and it's just fun. very sweet they just want to spend all their time with me we're not thinking no they want to spend all their time with me because they don't want me around anybody okay. else it doesn't even click in our head that way jealousy is another thing that can p appear to be very romantic abusers we even use it as a way of showing love but really jealousy is about you it's not about your partner and so it's your issue but we will see abusers mm -hmm. using jealousy me calling you every 10 minutes just to say I miss you and I love you but really I want to check and see where you are exactly and, and we and think that's cute and it's like you say we're seeing the rose-colored glass portion of it and not looking at does this really make sense right. for someone to check in on me every 10 minutes right. or or two or three times a day, right. you know, and, and I'm still at work or, or doing other kinds of things. So with this, uh, <laughs> this is fascinating, <laughs> the way in which we almost educate children sometimes when we're talking about looking for a healthy relationship, sometimes, tell me if this is right, but it seems like sometimes we're telling children, especially um, young girls, 
Well, you want to look for the kind of guy who's going to wine and dine exactly. you. He's going to take care of you, who literally will just sweep you off your feet. I mean, are we doing a disservice by just only saying that and not having them look at the other part of the picture? Exactly. When we talk about healthy relationships or when we teach healthy relationships, it's nice to teach the fairy tale end of it right. and talk about how it happens in soap operas where it's very mm -hmm. romantic, mm -hmm. it can be very dramatic, but it's also important that we teach other things about boundaries and deal breakers and that sort of thing so that young people know that even though this person is very sweet, very romantic, they have called me 10 times in one day. So this is a red flag because why would you call me that many times in one day? Or if someone says, I want to spend all my time with you, I always ask the question, why do you want to spend all your time mm -hmm, with me? Mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. shouldn't want to be together all the time. And so we have to start teaching in healthy relationships how not to just only look at the fairy tale, but also look at deal breakers and boundaries um, and setting goals for a relationship. A lot of people don't do that. I always say you need to date on purpose, date with something that, um, whatever your purpose and goal is, whoever you're dating, they need to fit into that. And if they don't, then that's a red flag not to be in that relationship. So it's even looking at, let's say if you're trying to pursue an education or you're doing some extracurricular things, to kind of see how that person is relating to that and do they seem to call you more or you have to report right. more. Uh, where did you go and I thought you said you were going here, you mean you ended up over there. Exactly. Uh, those kinds of things are red flags because uh, if it's a healthy relationship and there is trust there, that's not going to be issue if you said you were going to one um, department store and you ended up at another department store, but you didn't call in between. <laughs> right, right. Okay, okay. Right. And right now our young people believe that if my partner doesn't call me mm -hmm. and ask me where I'm at, then they obviously um, don't care about me. And so we have to teach the opposite side. You want your partner not to call every 10 minutes because you do want them to trust you. And you should trust your partner as well. All, you always need to have outside interests and friendships in a relationship. And if your world is revolved around your partner and your partner is revolved around you, those are those really, really dangerous relationships we'll run into. Those are the ones that make the news. Those are the ones that we see um, end up in homicide, suicide homicide, because their worlds were totally about each other. Okay, and that's the thing, like you're saying, we may be teaching our kids not the whole picture, just part of it, you know. Well, you should, they should call you, they should do this and that, but we're not talking about the excessiveness and, exactly. and those other kinds of symptoms that can be there. So if a person sees this, and we are going to come back and talk about the, the abuser side too, but if the person, whether it's a female, which typically is, but it could be a male, right. if they're starting to pick this up very early in the relationship, what should they do? Because maybe they do like the person, maybe they are falling for the person. How do they pull out or how can they redefine that? Right. I always say it's important to know what exactly you want in a relationship before you get into a relationship. And so therefore, when you develop a relationship slowly, you know what will work and what will not work. Um, and then also with relationships, um, if you are in a relationship and you see red flags, you can discuss it with the person, but if it's not going to work out or they're not believing they have a problem, then that's a good time for you to go ahead and exit the relationship. Okay, and we're going to come back and talk about how you do that because it's not so easy, not so easy. to do. It's easy to say, but hard <laughs> to do. So stay put, and you stay put. We'll be right back.